a good portion of this whole chapter deals with three-dimensional figures. Um, one of the challenges with dealing with three-dimensional figures in mathematics and geometry is that we don't usually have the capability of representing our three-dimensional figures in three dimensions. Most of us don't carry around, you know, 3D printers with us to print things out every time we want to describe them. So we have a couple of general sort of common ways of describing three-dimensional figures in two dimensions, or basically on a piece of paper as a drawing. And we're going to go over a couple of those here. The first one is by drawing a cross-section, and this one's really the most common. Um, the cross-section of a three-dimensional figure is really a picture of what it would look like if you were to take the three-dimensional figure and slice through it with, well, technically with a plane, but really you can imagine it as a piece of paper, and then see what part of the shape would intersect with that piece of paper, and that part is what we draw. So if, for instance, we were to draw, oh, I don't know, say, uh, a rectangular prism here, like so. Just sketch one out real quick. So we have a three-dimensional figure, like a box, and then we can represent that box in a couple of different ways. We can sketch it in three dimensions, kind of like I did here, just sort of a, a fake three dimensions. Or we could pretend that we were slicing it kind of along here with a piece of paper and that would give us a picture of sort of the cross-section of the middle of that rectangle, and it would look like a rectangle, just like so. Or we could go the long way. We could take a piece of paper that sort of slices through it lengthwise this way, and that would be a much longer rectangle. And then we could just, on the piece of paper, say this is what it looks like from the side, and this is what it looks like from the end, and then we could sort of give someone an idea of what that shape would look like in three dimensions. Now here, the example that we, all, we have over here in color shows that we had a triangular prism, and then if we cut through it near the end right here, we end up with just a triangle. So we'd have to tell someone that this was sort of a picture of what the end of the shape looked like, and the, the shape itself would be bigger than that and behind it. Yeah? Okay. And then the other common way of describing it would be what's called a net. And a net is a drawing of what would happen if you were to take your three-dimensional figure and unfold it so that each of the sides of the figure rep were represented by a full shape in your net. So if you were to say cut through this cube right here and unfold it out this way, then each of these faces, the ones that kind of went around the middle, would unroll into these long, into this long strip of uh, squares here, and then the ends here and the one opposite at the back would be these two pieces that s sort of flip out to the side. Now they're commonly is not a uh, specific way you have to draw a net. It just has to show each of the faces of your three-dimensional figure in such a way that it could be folded up along the dividing lines between your shapes to get your figure. And the reason I pointed out that it doesn't have to be a specific way is that, for instance, this cube right here could also be drawn as, say, all of our long shapes this way. One, two, three, four. But then your ends could be drawn out here like so, and we just roll the thing up and then flip those up instead of having them sort of in the middle. So there isn't really a specific way you have to draw it. Just make sure that the shapes uh, are each defining one side of your figure when it's all folded up. Okay, let's take a look at the example questions.